Well, what more can I say after this? Very nice. Thank you, Angelina. It was a beautiful introduction to this Waves of Change uh, conference. And I was thinking very hard how to introduce such a topic, because we've been talking a lot already at Nor Shipping about changing. Uh, but what I was really inspired by were the words by uh, Thomas Willemsen uh, in the session just before us, who at some point said he found it really annoying that the shipping industry is often labeled as being a conservative industry. But maybe we need to reflect a little bit on that. Um, a wise Greek ship owner whose name I'm not going to disclose uh, once to me said, said once to me that, you know, conservative is often misunderstood. Because conservative really is a positive thing. It's about preserving what is valuable to you. And in order to do that, you have to change. You have no choice. And a man that understood this w as well is a writer called Giuseppe Tomassi di Lampedusa. And he wrote a novel in 1956 called Il Gatto Pardo, The Leopard. And that was about changes in Sicily in the 19th century, where the uh, land-owning nobility was confronted with the Risorgimento, the unification of Italy. And there is one line in that novel that has become world famous. If you want everything to remain as it is, everything needs to change. And I thought that was an interesting perspective to introduce this Waves of Change conference uh, and look at the shipping industry. What is it that we want to preserve? What do we need to change in order to preserve it? And what kind of leadership do we need to make that happen? In my view, there are three essential things that we want to preserve. First of all, of course, the economic performance. Maybe that's more a matter of restoring than preserving, because some of the markets are still very difficult. We also want to make sure we can hand this industry over to next generations. And third, we want to share the pride that we have about being part of the maritime community. Let's start with the economic performance. As I said, is it restoration or preservation? There are difficult markets still there. I remember a couple of years ago reading a report from the Boston Container, uh, Consultancy Group who actually said that you know, lots of the difficulties that we now encounter, for instance, in the liner shipping sector, they are self-inflicted because we're applying the same recipes over and over, even if the circumstances have changed. I think from what we heard this morning, you know, that kind of analysis is probably no longer true, because we hear from many entrepreneurs in the shipping industry that they're looking at new business models, that they're uh, embracing disruptive technology, uh, data competence sharing was mentioned. In other words, moving away from traditional transactional models to new business concepts. Uh, again, Thomas Willemsen, he was very inspiring, I thought. He also mentioned at the end, whilst he was, of course, promoting change and evolution, he was proudly mentioning that his company has been around for 165 years. And that is also what characterizes our industry. It's a very traditional sector. Uh, many companies have been in family ownership for decades, if not centuries. And I think that is something we should be proud of, of that heritage. It is, of course, linked to the economic performance, but in order to hand over to next generations, it's not just economic performance, it's about sustainable performance. And a lot of talk has been uh, going on as well about the environmental track record of the shipping industry. And I know there is still some criticism out there from NGOs and other stakeholders. But what I do witness is that there is a positive change. If I compare the debate we had, let's say, about 10 years ago on SOX emissions, and if I compare that with the debate we have today about CO2 uh, emissions and climate change, I notice there is a significant change. I think back then, I think most of the uh, industry was still trying to, you know, deny, postpone, uh, pull out all the tricks in the trade to make sure more time was gained before these norms were entering into force. The Paris Agreement on climate has been a real game changer also for the shipping industry. And what we now see in the running up to the uh, discussions in IMO uh, in July uh, are very positive signs of an industry that wants to be part of the debate, that wants to be part of the solution, that wants to look at innovation and wants to look at, you know, what will be the new fuels, the new means of propulsion for the future. I think there is a major change going on within the uh, sector at the moment, even if, of course, 
the level of ambition can always be more, but there is clearly that conscience that if we want to hand over the shipping sector to the next generations, we have to invest in environmental performance as well. And the third point is this pride about being part of the maritime community. Myself, I started in 1985 as a student uh, in the shipping sector, working for Sealand, and I've never went out of it, and I will never go out of it, as, as I think, uh, uh, even if I'm moving shortly from shipping to ports. Uh, but I'm very proud of the industry, and I think most of you here uh, will share that pride. But are we carrying that message out there to other people? to future generations, to people? Are we making it attractive for people to work in this sector? Are we taking into account the diversity, not only gender diversity, of course, VISTA plays an incredibly important role for that, but also, um, you know, race diversity, religious diversity. How are we dealing with that in our industry? It's a matter of, of course, investing in people. It's a matter of training. It's about education. But above all, I think it's also a matter of communication, uh, not just with our customers, not just with our stakeholders, but also with the general public and the wider audience out there. And that, of course, uh, requires a totally different way of communicating uh, with, uh, with, the, with the public. So I mentioned what we should preserve, what kind of changes we need, and what about the leadership uh, that drives these changes. Again, we heard many examples, and I sh I'm sure we will hear many others today at this conference, from a uh, company and from people in the industry uh, that are front runners, that are early movers. But of course, we have to try and speak also with a collective voice, and that is pretty challenging uh, for what in itself uh, is a diverse industry. And we have many shipping organizations, many organizations that represent either the global voice or sectoral voices or regional voices like my own industry. And bringing all that together is not always an easy task. But I think we need to continue investing in that cooperation and perhaps also in the governance uh, of the uh, sector organizations that we can be as efficient as possible. That applies, of course, also to policy makers and you're very familiar with the debate that we have uh, between you know, the IMO as our global regulator and then you have regions like Europe who want to be a bit more ambitious sometimes. How do we deal with that? Not with sectoral measures, no. I think by having the debate inside by reaching out to our global partners and global stakeholders and drive change from the inside. I think that is the way forward also from a regulatory point of view. So, a welcome speech is to be supposed to be very short and to give some food for thought, so I will leave it with that. I'm, sh I'm sure I raised more questions than giving answers. Um, but next time uh, someone um, you know, calls our beautiful industry conservative, you know what to answer them, and I will say it in Italian. Se vogliamo che tutto rimanga come è, bisogna che tutto cambi. Thank you.